crayons 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 yes today my video is all about crayons hello to you all and welcome to my channel my name is Mardis, also known as marley design and yeah i already told you crayons that is the theme for today's video i think it was a week or two weeks ago that I received a nice reaction comment on one of my Instagram posts and in the comments the lady also said that it would be nice for her if I could do a technique video on the Distress Crayons. I replied to her that I could definitely consider that and yeah it just kept yeah swirling around in my mind my head went into overdrive with all the techniques that came to mind and when you feel that kind of buzz uh, yeah you know you want and need to do something yeah with that here we are today yeah for yeah some techniques with the crayons and i'm not going into all kind of uh, features and chemicals and everything that is in the crayon because tim already does a good job on that in his own uh, like live streams and videos so i would recommend if you want to know that to check his videos out for me this is all about playtime trying things out making nice color combinations and just in general explore the paper that i am working on today is a watercolor paper white color this paper has two sides you can see this one this side is more textured and the other side is more smooth my choice for today will be to work on the smooth side but first I want to prepare my papers with some collage medium I will apply a thin layer of distress collage medium on top of the smooth side of this watercolor paper and let it dry before I will do anything else with the paper and the crayons The Distress Collage Medium is dry right now. I have let these papers air dry. I did not only prepare these two, I just prepared a whole stack. So if you want to work with the crayons in a flow from one technique to the other, you can better have a stack of those prepared papers instead of adding collage medium, doing a technique, adding collage medium, doing a technique. So no, that is not my way of working. I have a whole stack of these so I can get going. Let's go to our first technique. Technique one is about creating a watercolor wash. And yeah, if we can create that, just a small thin layer of a little bit of color on top of the paper. I will work with these two colors, Hickory Smoke is on the top and Iced Spruce is on the bottom. I started out with the hickory smoke, dried my layer, started with the iced spruce, again dried my layer, um, and then I went back in with the, um, with the hickory smoke again, and after that the iced spruce again. And I think uh, you can even build more layers than only what I did today, but um, yeah, it's just to show you what is possible, because you can start out a light and yeah, end up maybe even darker than this that also means that you can choose when you want to stop and you can choose which effect you are happy about this is already a great background a great base to start with what i also have over here is some leftover of my crayons 
And what you also can see is that I did not clean my craft sheet uh, because I do not mind uh, when colors are like mixing a bit. I always think it is a waste to leave it here or before I go to the next step, wipe it away with a cloth. So I will use this leftover on my paper by dipping my paper into the color. The speckles are small, but I do like the effect because, yeah, for me, irregularity works best. No perfection needed, and that is just great. I will put this to the side, and then we will go to our second technique. My second technique is all about dipping. Dipping my paper into, yeah, the crayons. And why this technique? Well, uh, our first technique just ended with dipping, and that made me think, let's make a paper totally about dipping and see what the result is when we do that. For this technique, I will use these three crayons. Tea dye, spiced marmalade, scorched timber. And this is the result of the dipping. My first layer was all about the tea dye and spiced marmalade color. I did not go in with a dark color right away. I always start with the lighter colors. So I can build up my layers from light till dark. So the scorched timber came a little bit later. And with the leftover of that, I could not resist to do a little bit of splattering and to use the leftover color and my little, you know, my splatter brush. Uh, yeah, to wipe the color on the sides of my paper to create a little bit of a darker edge. Then, at that moment, I still had product on my craft sheet left. I'm very terrible at spilling my products. So, yeah, I went back in with the paper and, yeah, mostly dipped my paper on the corners to create a little bit more of darkness here and here. Now let's go to technique three. For technique three, I have my paper ready. Again, there is a layer of collage medium on top and I have chosen two colors of the Distress Crayon. I have Forest Moss and Peacock Feathers. I will put the crayon onto my craft sheet and then pick it up with a baby wipe so I can apply it to the paper. You can see when you apply it with a baby wipe, it is really more like a wash. You will transfer a very, very light color onto the paper. But when you work in like, say, pastel colors, this would be very, very pretty. When you like more contrast, so darker areas and lighter areas, yeah, you will need to do something more to the paper to get that effect. 
and to do so I will jump right into technique number four so that is a technique where I will apply the crayons straight onto the paper Well, technique number three gave us a very light colored result. Uh, putting the crayon straight onto the paper in our fourth technique, you can see the colors are more vibrant. Only thing that you have to keep in mind to use, well, let's say two different fingers for every color one finger. Otherwise, you will smudge the colors immediately. And uh, what I also uh, saw is, of course, you want to try to hold the paper down. So you will put your fingers on an area that has already crayon on top and then it will leave a fingerprint. That is the reason why I took a kitchen towel and put it on the edge give a little pressure so your paper will not move and then move the color around with your fingers hoping that the paper will not leave an imprint on the paper that you just colored but when it does like below here on the bottom it does not disturb me but if it does to you when you are doing this, yeah, then try to add a little bit more crayon and smudge it out with your fingers again. Even though this is, uh, well, a great basic background to work on, if for me it is not like grungy enough. So what I would like to try is to use some water drops and I will use a kitchen towel and see if I can pick up any of the colors. Ooh, that already looks so good. That is way better than I had expected to be. And right now my eyes are already drawn to this like darker area and also this darker area with the peacock feathers. And when looking at those darker areas, I really want to jump right in and make those edges even darker. So let's do that. Yeah, and that was the darkening of the edges. I really like this background. Uh, if you want the crayons to be set and dried a little bit more, you can dry them with your heat tool. But doing this technique will also bring me a new technique because I could remove the crayon with water. So that is what I would like to do in my next technique. Technique number five, remove the crayon so we can see the layer underneath. I prepared another piece of paper with the same two colors that we just used in technique four, forest moss and peacock feathers. I have put the crayon onto the paper, smudged it out with my fingers, and now I will remove some of the crayons with a stencil and a baby wipe. I will use a baby wipe for removing the color, but you could also use a damped old cloth. And look how well that worked. I also love those darker outlines that you see. The crayon has built up a little bit over there, but I do like that effect. And also in the background, you can see there is still a little bit of color left. That is also what I like because yeah, just plain white paper is not my kind of thing. I would like to have some color there and that worked out just fine. Only thing I will do is dry the crayons. So after that, we can go to our next technique and I will also use a stencil because you can also think the other way around having a white paper, putting a stencil on top and use the crayons directly into the holes of the stencil. Let's try. I have chosen two crayons, twisted citron and gathered twigs.
and this is the result after applying the crayon straight onto the paper through the holes of the stencil. You can see the colors are more intense and yeah this is not the only layer you can do. You can go back in there and add more and more until you are happy with the result. Let's move on and go to technique 7. I have my prepared paper. I have a stamp set, the Distress Damask stamp set CMS 190 and I have picked two colors of the crayons, aged mahogany and picked raspberry. My first attempt of stamping with the crayons will be in the next order. I will put some of the crayons onto my craft sheet, wet it down with water and I will try to pick up the color with my stamp set. Oh yes, yes, this is great. Such a beautiful result. I can already imagine when you love like florals and flowers and a botanical theme that this could be a very nice technique to work with. And look at this up close. The stamping that I just did brings me another technique, technique 8, uh, what I really would like to try. I'm going to add my crayons directly to the paper then I will wet my stamp and I will try to pick up the color and see if it will leave an imprint. Well, we can definitely see a part of the, the stamp. Uh, but maybe that is what comes to mind, that the stamp was too detailed. That could even make it harder to pick up the color and remove it. So let me find another kind of stamp and see if that will work better. I have found this stamp from the Tim Holtz stamp set Wildflowers CMS253. Oh yes, that is so much better already. That is so cool. Really, really just awesome. I really like it. In the end it turned out like this. So what did we learn? That a more detailed stamp is yeah, more difficult to see and more difficult to remove the color. But when you use a stamp like this, more solid areas, the effect is much and much better. Well, that was a great lesson. On to our last and final technique, number nine. I have a piece of prepared paper. I have an embossing folder from Tim Holtz and Sizzix. The number is 666156. And I have two crayons, peacock feathers and gathered twigs. With the crayons, I will first create a basic layer on top of my paper. I will let that dry completely and then I will run my paper in the embossing folder through my machine. This already looks so cool, so amazing. Look at all those cracks and creases and little details. That is gorgeous. So there would be nothing wrong if you would use it like it is right now, but maybe we can alter just small bits of the raised areas by adding a bit of crayon on top. And to do so, I will use a Distress Crayon Scorch Timber. And this is the result of just a little bit of crayon on top. I always think it is amazing that with just one crayon, one color, you can create yeah, contrast and texture. 
So if you would like to get back in for, say, example, we use the peacock feathers and you want a little bit more blue tones, of course you are able to. For now, I will leave it as it is right now. But yeah, feel welcome to try things out and add layer on top of layer and experiment by yourself. Here I have all the backgrounds that I have made and I think, yeah, it's just only nine techniques. Of course, there is more, you can do more, but yeah, then this video will be <laughs> like very long. But this is very basic, easy, quick and simple for everyone to do. And it is an awesome way to get a jump start at finding out how the crayons work and what you can do with them. I also hope that the person who mentioned this to me uh, on my Instagram account is happy with the video and is willing to try all the techniques out. Uh, yeah, when you do, feel free to send me a picture or let me know if you have created something. That will be very, very awesome. I also want to reach out to all my other followers because when there is something that you want to know or you have a great idea for a new video for me, uh, if you need to know something about techniques or colors, whatever is on your mind creatively, you can always bring it up to me so I can consider every possibility. I enjoyed my creative time playing with the crayons, finding out how they work, what does not work, and being surprised and amazed by the effects that you can create. I hope you also got some inspiration out of my video. When you do, please like, subscribe or comment down below. That will help me keep my videos in a great algorithm. Everything you will do for me on my social media platforms, on YouTube and everything is greatly appreciated. When you want to check out all the supplies that I have used, go to my description box and check out all my links. Also in my description box are my links for my social media platforms, my coffee shop and also my Etsy store. I will wrap it all up. Thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye!